Hello, Matt Davis here with more homework quiz help. This one is from section 8.4. Suppose we will be computing a 95% confidence interval for a population that has a standard deviation of 3.0853. What sample size will be required to have a margin of error of at most 0.5? Enter your answer as a whole number. So the first thing that we're going to do is change the margin of error so that we are trying to give help rather than answers. So instead of 0 0.5, we're going to change that to 0 0.65. Be the same idea on the work, just a different answer at the end. And then the second thing we need to do is figure out our setting. And honestly, it's a little tricky on this one because they don't completely give us the context. They say we're computing a 95% confidence interval for a population. They don't actually say if it's for a mean or a proportion, and that's always a big deal for us to decide. So we kind of have to sort that out from the rest of the evidence. They're giving us a standard deviation from that population of 3.0853. We never get given a standard deviation for the population in the proportion setting, so this must be in the setting of a mean. We also know that because we're in section 8.4, but it would be nicer if it said. All right, so this is sigma, and... We have a 95% confidence interval, and what is it that we're trying to find? We're trying to find the sample size. So let's go to our formula sheet and investigate further on how we're going to do this. All right, so on the formula sheet, if you look at Chapter 8, and you look in the context of means, so this whole line right here is for means. The one down below right there is for proportion stuff. So we're going to look at the one for means. And we have two formulas to choose from for n, which is the sample size. We have these two right here. So which one are we going to choose? Well, if you look, it really depends on one piece of information, which is this one right here. Sorry, meant to highlight there. So is it s or is it a guess at sigma that we have? So which of those two do we know? So the standard deviation they gave us is from the population. So the best guess you could ever have for the population standard deviation is the actual population standard deviation. So the one that we're going to use is going to be this one right here where we have a guess at sigma rather than a sample standard deviation. So let's go back and write that down and then proceed from there. All right, so the formula that we just decided we're going to use is n equals z star times sigma g divided by e all squared. So we got to start gathering together that information. So what is our guess at sigma? Well, we actually know sigma. So that's going to be our guess at sigma, 3.0853. What margin of error do we want? They gave us that. They said we want a margin of error of at most 0 0.65. So the one piece that remains is e star. To find Z star, you need to work from the confidence level. So let's go ahead and take that 95% confidence level and think about what Z star that means we're going to use. So we put 95% in the middle in decimal form, so 0 0.95. That means there's a leftover 5% or 0 0.05, which we cut in half and put half on each side. So each of these tails would have an area of 0 0.025. And then this boundary right here would be the Z star we're looking for. And then that boundary, because it has an area of 0 0.025 to its right, would also be Z of 0 0.025. And we can find that from the formula sheet. So let's go ahead and jump over to the formula sheet and look for that. So we need to go to the second page of the formula sheet where we have our table. We want z of 0.025, so that means we're going to look at the column for t of 0.025, and we're going to go all the way down to the bottom, all the way down to the separated row, which is where the z-scores are. So the z-score we want is in the separated row at the bottom of the t of 0.025 column. Everything up above is a t-score, but that separated row is a z-score. So 1.960 is the z-score we want, so let's head back with that. So this is 1.960, and now we have all the information that we need. So scratch work down here, complete. Let's go start filling that into the formula. So we just found our z-score, 1.960. 
the sigma guess. We're going to use the actual sigma that we are lucky enough to know on this problem. Divide that by the desired margin of error, and then remember to square the whole thing. That is a common mistake people do is forget to do that square piece, so don't forget that. Let's jump over to the calculator and take care of that squaring. Well, the whole calculation, really. So key thing, open parentheses at the beginning because it's the whole fraction that's squared. So then we do our sigma times our... Sorry, we do our z-score times our sigma. And then divide by the desired margin of error. And we do all three of those numbers before we close the parentheses. And then we square to make sure we're squaring that whole fraction with all three numbers inside. So we get 86.55 roughly. Let's go ahead and take that back. So we got approximately 86.55. It says to round our answer as a or enter our answer as a whole number. It is sample size, so it has to be a whole number. And we always round sample size up. So we're going to go from 86.55 to 87. Now I've changed the numbers, so yours might be different. So just to point out, if this had been 86.15, I would still round up. We always round up when finding sample size. So the number we'd put into active learning would be that 87. Um, key things to remember on this, when you're doing a z-score, there's no df. If you're using df, you're getting a t-score. So that's why we went all the way down to the bottom to get our z-score on the table. Don't forget that square right there. That is something that people often forget. And then always round up, even if up is not the closest. Make sure that you're always doing a round up right there. All right, hopefully that helped you out. And good luck to you as you head back to your quiz.